Hey guys, and welcome to my Heart of Stone quest guide for RuneScape 3. Now, to be able to complete this quest, you must have completed the Canelian Rising and the Rune Memories quest, and you must also have 25 rune crafting and 35 magic. Now, I strongly recommend that you bring magic combat gear, some food, and some water skins, but those are just suggestions. It's also suggested that you have 20 empty slots in your inventory, but you're going to need that towards the second half of the quest, so for now, don't worry about it. So to start this quest, all you have to do is travel north of the Wizard's Tower, or south of the Draenor Village, and there you'll be able to find Ariane and Xenia engaging some sort of argument. Now speak to either one of those and accept to do the quest, and you'll go straight into a cutscene which will be right in front of the Wizard's Tower. Now Ariane challenges Xenia, accusing her of stealing some research and killing a friend of hers. Um, Xenia admits to having done so, but while she claims to have done so with some good intentions, she will not reveal her motives. So Xenia and Ariane will get into some kind of big fight where you intervene and you can either choose to help Ariane or to help Xenia or just to kind of split them apart. So whatever you choose to do will not make any difference. Now once the dialogue kind of plays out, Xenia will stun Ariane with a spell and teleport away um, using a spell that Ariane does not recognize. So Ariane can now be found on the north eastern corner of the wizard's tower so head right to the corner of the wizard's tower island and once you arrive there you better talk to Ariane, and she'll kind of explain who this kipple is so once you are at the north eastern corner of the wizard's tower you'll be able to find Ariane and kipple which is as she explains a kinesthetic investigation programmable personality life form emulator which kind of spells out to say kipple uh, is designed to kind of find people who teleport away by magical means now she will instruct you to retune Kipple in an attempt to home in on Xenia's teleportation signal. So you're going to have to do this quite a few times during the quest. So it's going to be pretty much up to you to find Xenia. So after talking to Ariane and pretty much going through all the chat logs, she's going to make you talk to Kipple. Now once you talk to Kipple, he's going to show you a screen that looks a bit like this. Now there are four frequencies to locate, so the interference will not give you any hints until you get closer to a specific frequency. And when you do, a pretty much a scrolling dot of red will show on the graph, and the red dot will go up and down. So when it goes up and down, it pretty much show you what sort of locations each rune has to be in. So this is where you're going to have to think about it. So you're going to have to be turning the wheel to match the levels shown by the dot, and pretty much until you find a match. So after which Kipple will mark an approximate destination on your world map. But in case you don't understand, let me kind of explain it again in more simpler terms. So at the top right of this picture, you can kind of see there's a red dot on top of the blue column. So at the bottom of those columns, you can see water, nature, mind, law, fire, etc, etc. So the ones that the columns are in color, those are the ones you're going to have to match. So as you can see right now, the red dot has peaked at number seven which is on the, the left side of the little box there which means that we're going to have to find a total of seven points on the water runes so as you can see right now there is currently on the picture there's three water runes inside the whole thing on the two points there is two which makes four points in total and on the middle point which is three points uh, there is just one water rune so that's two three seven so in total there's seven points now accumulated on the water runes which means that we have now reached the perfect position for the red dot on that graph which is at number seven. And you're going to have to do that to all the other columns also at the same time. Um, so you're going to have to move all your runes around until they're all at the same point where the red dot peaks on each one until you find the correct combination for the whole thing. So hopefully that made a bit of sense but it's not that hard once you think about it and you should get the gist of it after a while. But don't forget that it's most likely different for everyone, so sadly um, I can't really show you the specific combination runes for each one. So once you've done the correct rune combination, you're going to get a location to go to. Now as far as I've been told, this rune location is not the same for everyone. So in case it's not the same, well my one is Entrana for the first one, in case it's not the same, all you got to do is just check in the description below and there's going to be the locations for each one. It's the same location for everyone, but in different orders. So in case it is, all you have to do is just go into the description and you will be able to find Entrana, 
and then there'll be a video time next to it. So all we gotta do is just skip to that video time where we go to that location and that should be as simple as it should be. So just go to description and it should be there. But in case it's in Trana, all you have to do is go to Port Sarim and go to the bank deposit boxes near the boat and deposit any armors that you might be wearing or anything that might involve combat into there and then you'll be allowed to travel to Entrana. So once you've banked any combat equipment and you're ready to travel into Entrana, board the boat and directly you arrive at the port you should be able to find Kippel where if you talk to him he's going to give you another one of those rune combination puzzles to complete. So complete the puzzle and he will reveal the next location for you to enter which will be on the north side of Entrana. So travel to the north side of Entrana, which means you're going to have to travel all the way around the church, across the unicorns, across the farm, and pretty much just directly north of Entrana, you're going to find on your mini-map a blue square which will kind of show you the location that you're going to have to go to, and you're going to enter this cloud of smoke with lightning inside, and when you enter, you're going to be given weapons to fight with. So as is in Trana, you're not going to really be allowed to bring any weapons inside. So all you're going to have to do is once you enter the cloud is try and talk to Bikra, where Kippel's going to really say to you that he's going to try and sort it out so that he can get rid of this wooden barrier. And he's going to give you some weapons to attack monsters with. So I strongly recommend maybe use the air battle staff and go on the highest spell possible where you're going to be able to kill these monsters that start to attack you. Now it's going to pretty much be about four minutes or so where you're going to be attacking these monsters and Kippel is going to get these three black golems and line them up on the, the wooden fence where once they've all lined up all you're going to have to do is go towards the fence and light them all up where they'll all explode and the fence will open up. So as you can see Kippel is kind of gathering up these unstable attendants and lining them up along the fence. Now once all three have been lined up which will take maybe a minute each one um, it's completely random how long it will take but once you've done that, all you're going to have to do is light them up. They will blow up the wooden fence and once they've done that, you're just going to enter the room and talk to Bikra. Now just talk to Bikra, go through all the chat options and once you've done that, all you're going to have to do is talk to Kippel and once again you're going to have to do another one of those rune puzzles and he's going to tell you the next location to go to. So for me, my next location after completing the rune puzzle is the Karamja Volcano. Now don't forget that in case it's not Karamja Volcano for you, just check in the description below and along with maybe your next location which might be um, the White Wolf Mountain, just click on the time next to it and it will skip you to that part of the video. And once you've completed that, in case the next one is Karamja again, just go back in the video and you'll pretty much be at the same spot. So it doesn't matter what options you choose, there are three we're going to have to do and then the last one will always be the same one for all of us. So in case yours is also the Karamja Volcano, I strongly recommend that first you go towards a bank and pick up some weapons. Because if you have completed the Entrana, you are going to now need weapons for the rest of the whole quest. So I strongly recommend that you might bring magic combat gear or anything like that that would pretty much be allow you to use a bit of combat at the same time. So in case magic isn't your speciality, you can bring other weapons just in case, but it's really up to you. I strongly recommend also that you bring a bit of food and once you have done all this and you are prepared to fight, go to the Karamja Volcano and travel to the south of the volcano and there Kippel is going to give you another one of those rune puzzles to do and once you've done that, where that same cloud with lightning inside is going to open up, all you have to do is enter and whilst you enter, Kippel is going to be fighting a case for you and whilst he is fighting this case with the, the head, um, you're pretty much going to be fighting off waves of monsters. But all you have to do is just stay alive. In the long run you will take quite a bit of damage so I strongly recommend you bring a bit of food for this one. I had no weapons and no armors and it took me about 3-4 minutes to complete this one but I used up about 5-6 to six rock tails. So as long as you can bring maybe a few rock tails at the same time also you should be fine and especially if you have weapons and armors to fight off the monsters. But once you're ready just enter the cave and just get ready to fight. Whilst fighting these monsters you will notice that the floor lights up where if you stand on the lit up area you will get dealt damage so all you have to do is just walk away and you will be fine. In case you want to know how long is left for the case to be won, if you look on the top left corner of my screen you can see a green bar that's slowly but slowly going to reach the end and once that reaches the end all these monsters will disappear. So as long as you just stay alive you will be fine. So after all the monsters have disappeared just pretty much go and talk to the head, go through all the chat boxes 
and directly you finish, just talk to Kipple. It's pretty simple, just go through every single chat in interference you can pretty much go through. He's going to explain everything you need to know, and directly you've done that, you will be able to move on. You're going to have to do another room puzzle with Kipple. So once you've completed that, he will give you the next location, which for me is the White Wolf Mountain. In case it's not the same for you, just check in the description below and everything will be there. This quest should probably take you about 30 to 40 minutes or so. Um, it is supposed to be a short, easy quest and it is quite easy once you get used to it and the rewards aren't so great, but you will see the rewards to the end. So in case yours was the White Wolf Mountain also, all you have to do is travel to the Tavoli Lodestone and head towards the mountain to the west. So directly heading up the mountain you will see on your mini map a blue square. So directly you enter that blue square Kipper will pretty much just talk to you again and he is going to give you another one of those room puzzles to complete and once you've completed that there is going to be slightly on the south of that blue square another one of those clouds with lightning storms in it. Just enter the portal and this is probably going to be one of the easiest ones for you because I've made it quite easy to understand so hopefully this should be the easiest one for you. So right now on the screen you can see a bird's eye view of this puzzle. Now this puzzle consists pretty much of four steps each time getting a little bit harder and pretty much right now on the right of the screen you can see the four steps all marked out quite clearly. So whichever one is green you activate it and it's pretty simple you know A is green so you activate it um, B is green so activate it and through each of these steps you will be able to pretty much complete each of these puzzles until you have completed the last stage of this whole puzzle. Directly you've done that you go and talk to the head where once you've gone through all the chat locks with him he'll pretty much allow you to move on and talk to Kipple and complete the next room puzzle. And this is one of the semi-final steps you're going to have to do to complete this quest and we are almost finished. So the next stage for me is to travel to Sophenum, which means that I'm going to be traveling to the bandit camp and then just pretty much heading south into Sophenum. Um, in case it's not the same for you, just check in the description below and there will be pretty much the four locations and just skip to that part of the video in case you get that location first and you don't get Sophenum. But just travel to Sophenum and you will pretty much be able to talk to Kippo again and once again complete another room puzzle where once you've done that, the same cloud pretty much will appear where you enter that cloud and the final stage where until you reach kind of like the boss is going to be completed. So once you are to the east of Sophenum, this is where you might require one or maybe even two water skins, but it should be quite an easy room puzzle for you to complete. And once you have completed the room puzzle, he's going to give you the next location to go to and it's just going to be slightly to the north east of Sophenum. You can find it by the, the lake to the north around all these pillars. As far as I know, the same location where the cloud appears is the same for everyone. So when you enter this area, now this one's slightly different than all the rest. Search any of the shelves and this is where your 23 empty slots in your inventory will come in handy. So search one of the shelves, doesn't matter which one you search, and you will get 20 items in your inventory. So for this next stage, all you have to do is add these observations together in your inventory and you're going to show them to the head that can be found to the north and he's going to say, okay, that proves something or if it doesn't prove anything. Now, I know the correct combination to do, so as long as you follow the combination, you should be fine. If you check in your inventory, you can notice that every single one of these have different names. So I'm going to be saying a name and adding it to another name and you're going to combine these both together and then you're going to use it on the head to the north. So to start off, if you add evolution and imprinting together, it will make a golem and eye. They'll both add together and it will make this one pretty much observation. And then if you add predator and focus together, it will make Ariane and the golem. Now if you add these both together, these both completed, it will make united we stand. Now if you show this to the head, it will pretty much allow you to move on into the, to the next stage. If you add dispersal and arrival together, and then also correction and transition together and then conflict and condemnation together you'll have three different observations but like pretty much different sizes as they were when you started. If you show each one of these at the different times to the head he'll pretty much prove your innocence and he will allow you to continue. So speak to Jaskar which is the head's name and he will let you move on and pretty much show you what he knows. 
Now in case you're curious as to why some of the observations aren't used, you don't have to worry about that unless you want to kind of find out more information. But I'm just going to show you on how to complete the quest. So after completing all that, you're going to have to talk to Kipple that can be found at the entrance of this cave. Now he's going to say that he believes that Xenia is at the Lumbridge Cemetery. So travel to the Lumbridge Cemetery that can be found pretty much south of the Lumbridge Lodestone and enter the portal that can be found there. Now you're going to be quite happy to know that you're not going to have to complete any more of those room puzzles. That should be done for now. And you're just going to go straight into the, to the portal and you're going to have the conversation with Xenia. Now she will explain her motive that the Elder Gods slept beneath Gilinor, that they will destroy the world you know, if they awaken, and that she intends to prevent that from happening. Now Ariane will arrive and the conversation will continue, so just go for the conversation, and then Xenia will reveal that she intends to drain all magic from the world to pretty much prevent the Elder Gods from returning. Now Ariane will object and explain that there must be a better way, but this is when Arian, you know, will threaten Xenia and eventually attack and even kill Xenia and he'll knock back her body into the portal where it was formed. This will summon a prehistoric creature from the Abyss and directly engage in combat. The first phase, the monster will be immune to any attacks. So there's no point really attacking the monster. All you're going to have to do is to avoid the large, slow-moving fireballs and listen out for Kipple. Now he will locate Abyssal Anchors which, once revealed, you can click on them to destroy them. So do this three times and a cutscene will play where the abyssal monster will charge up a large attack and Kipper will leap in front of you and you know, so you gain attacked and he will be killed in the process. Now Ariane will be injured leaving you to complete the fight. Now just so you know the abyssal monster is highly resistant to melee and range so you're suggested to fight with magic. Um, you can use melee and range if you want to but it's a slightly longer um, but once defeated, speak to Ariane and you pretty much completed the quest, you know, it's that simple. In case you want to obtain a Kipple, you know, summoning monster, all you have to do is travel back to the Wizard's Tower and on the northeastern corner you can talk to Ariane where she will give you like a little miniature Kipple where you can summon him and you pretty much have him to keep forever. So thanks for watching. Um, it's pretty a simple quest. There isn't really much you need to know on this quest. It's just the puzzles that seem to be the hardest bit. So thanks for watching. I hope it has helped you in some way or another. Don't to give it. Don't forget to give it a thumbs up if you have enjoyed the video. And if it did help you, don't forget to subscribe. So thanks for watching. I'll see you guys soon.